Hello friends, we are still not employed by a fang company, so let's not stop late coding till we get there. Today we are going to do jump game problem. Recently this problem has been asked in Amazon, Facebook, Apple, Google, Oracle, TikTok, all these gigantic companies and uh, they are some of my dream companies. So I'm going to do my utmost focus for this video and I hope that you uh, find it enjoyable. This is going to be the framework for the video. First we are going to understand the problem, then we will come up uh, with a brute force approach. We will improve our brute force approach. We will find the optimal solution and then we will write the java code for the optimal solution. This is a medium problem and we are given an integer array nums and we are initially positioned at the first index so 0th uh, index. Each element in the array represents that the that is the maximum jump we can take and uh, if that is true can we reach to the last position. So if we are able to reach to the last position we would uh, return true if we cannot return uh, reach we can we will return false so let's understand this with an example suppose our given input is like 2 3 1 1 and 4 and initially we are located at this position this is the same example over here so we can see that if we over here we can take maximum two jumps so either we can take one jump and reach over here or we can take two jumps and reach over here. Let's let's get the greedy approach and we'll take the maximum number of amount of jumps. So over here, if we take two jumps, we end up over here. Over here, the maximum jump we can take is only one. So we can re we'll reach over here. Again, the maximum jump we can take is just one. So we'll reach over here. And this is our last position. So since we have reached over here, which means that we can conclude that we can uh, solve this jump game and we can reach to this end position. So we'll return true in this case. Now let's take uh, one more example. So suppose we are given input like this, three, two, one, zero, and four. And if we check for the possibility, so over here, the maximum number of jumps we can take is three jumps. So if we take three jumps, we reach at zero. From zero, we can't move any, any anywhere for, forward. Uh, so let's rather than taking three jumps, we'll try to take two jumps. So if we take two jumps, we end up over here and over here, the maximum we can take is just one jump. So again, we end up at zero. And lastly, rather than taking two jumps from here, we'll just take one jump. So we'll end up over here at this position number two. Now at this two, the maximum jumps we can take is two. So again, we end up the, at the zero, which means that in any circumstances, if we start at this position number one, we cannot re reach to this last position. So over here, we would return false. This is basically the problem statement. Uh, I have given a custom example that we are at any position. We are going to first of all, see that what is the maximum jump we can take. We'll try to make that jump. We'll try to see that using that jump, if we can reach to this end index, if we cannot reach to the end index somehow, we will backtrack, we will go back to the position where we initially took the jump from and we will try some other possibilities. So let's see that in action. So over here, we are initially at this position number two, the maximum jump we can take is at uh, value number two. So that jump will bring us over here. Now over here, the maximum jump we can take is at uh, this position zero which means that we can't move any further. So we will backtrack. So we will backtrack. We will come back over here. Now again, we are at the second position. Now let's rather than taking the two jump, we will reduce our jumping possibility and we will just take a jump of one step. So now we reach at this value number three and over here with this value number three, we can take maximum jump of three steps which means that we can, if we take three steps, we will end up over here. So one, two, three. And at this position two, the maximum number of steps we can take is two, which means that even if we take two steps, we will cross our last uh, entry, which means that in any case, we would be able to reach to this last element and we would return true in this scenario. Now, this approach seems sensible on pen and paper because we are dealing with a small number of uh, things, a uh, small, small number of input, and we are able to clearly see that how the pattern is going on. So let's take another example. So these are the values. Let me also denote the index values for these. Now, 
with every single iteration i am going to note down the uh, in the index value transition we are making okay so initially we are at this position number five the maximum jump we can take is a five step which means that we would end up over here so initially we would do something like this so zero to five this is one one step we take we are at zero position which means we can't go forward which means we have to backtrack which means that again uh, from five we will come back to this zeroth index now from five rather than making a jump of five steps we will make jump of four steps and we would end up at this position four so from zero we would end up at this position four now from this four the maximum jump we can make is one so again we will take one step jump and we would end up at this position five again from we are at zero we can't do anything so we will have to backtrack so in order to backtrack we will go to go back to this position number four again we have to backtrack from this position four so we will end up at zero again we will rather than making a jump of four step we will make a jump of three step and we will end up over here so we end up over here and so on and so forth so you can see that this uh, in this approach all we are doing is just we are going some place we are coming back again we are going we are going and then again we are coming back again we are going to some next element we are going to some next element and we are coming back and suppose this keeps repeating multiple times uh, you are essentially depleting your resources because if you see the time complexity at any single iteration uh, or at any single value we have two possibilities whether we wants to keep this value in our current transition or we do not want to keep our value uh, keep this value in our current uh, path that we are calculating which means that the input if we make decision tree the decision tree would, would keep on growing and growing with uh, addition of every single value which means that uh, we are basically making lot of decisions and the time complexity in this scenario would actually be big o of 2 to the power n because at every single position we are making two possibilities this is a very bad exponential time complexity which we cannot allow in any scenario okay so the issue in the brute force approach we had is that we were doing a lot of repetitive work because at any point we found out that we are not able to make any progress from this point we are still ending up at that point so let's see that how can we counter that with a better approach suppose we create an additional data structure over here so we create a dynamic programmatically additional data structure over here uh, let's create an array and in that array we are going to define that at any position can we reach to this endpoint and if we identify that yes we can reach to this endpoint uh, we would basically fill that position as true and let's see that how it can help us so if at any point in time we are at this final position we know that this is the main uh, terminating case which means that we can put true over here so this final element we can al always put true and this would actually become our base case now we have a base case we are going to start iterating on from right to left manner and uh, we are going to start filling up our dp array to see and in the dp array the only thing we are mentioning is that at any given location if we are able to reach to this end point or not if we can we will just mark it as true otherwise we will mark it as false okay so now one step over here this is uh, this uh, value has potential to make two jumps uh, and it only takes one jump to get to this last point which means that if we end up at this fourth position we can reach to this fifth position which is what we want so over here we can also fill this as true now we are at this zeroth position from this zeroth position can we reach to this fifth position no because we cannot we can basically can't make any jumps so we'll just fill this as false okay now from this one can we end up at this fifth position so we are going to now the interesting part comes now we are going to check that okay this has possibility of only doing one jump right so with one jump we can only end up at this third index now we only need to check that in this dp array for this third index if the value is true or false so in this case this is already false which means that the maximum we can get to is this third place um, from this third place we can't go anywhere so we don't even need to check these values we can only check this the dp table 
and we can con conclude that no we can't go any way forward so we will put a false over here as well now we are at this third position now from this third position we will again do the same check but the thing is this has potential to do three jumps okay so let's do one jump at a time so first we take a jump if we take a jump of one step we end up over here we check over here that this is false which means that this is false right now we take second jump with the second jump we end up at this third position we check in this dp array this is also false which means that we can't do anything now from this third position we still have one more possibility that we can take a jump of three uh, values so if we take a jump of three values we end up at this position value number uh, this index number four so for this index number four we f we see that the value is true if we find any true which means that we can say that from this second uh, this index uh, index number one we can reach to this last endpoint and now for this uh, position we need to check that uh, it has po po potential to do two jumps we will only check for one jump so with one jump we will end up at this first uh, uh, index that one is true which means that we can fill true over here as well and in the end we just need to return whatever of dp of zero we found so in this case we can determine that this uh, is true which means that we are able to come to final uh, endpoint so this solution is very good it works perfectly fine okay so the time co time and space complexity for this approach would be so the time complexity would be big O of n square because notice that we need to do one iteration to go on the to, for every single element and sometimes for any given element we ha might have to do multiple jumps like we did in this case of three so in the worst case we might have to uh, solve this in big O of n square time and the space complexity would also be big O of n uh, because we are creating this additional dp array now this is still much better than our brute force approach but our aim is to go into companies like google facebook amazon apple and uh, whatnot so those companies expect the best out of the best solutions and is this the best out of the best solutions we can do uh, actually no there is still a better optimal solution and let me show you how we can get there okay and this optimal solution is actually based on uh, the dynamic programming solution that we just saw so in dynamic programming what we are doing is we are creating an additional uh, dp array and we are so storing that whether we can uh, reach to this last element or not but the thing is what if rather than storing this value at any position when we find out that suppose from this position we found out that yes we are able to reach to this last position so why do we need to check that whether we can reach to this last position or not if at any point amongst these values if we end up at this position we would still be able to guarantee that we can reach the last element because we have already checked this this condition so rather than checking to for this whole thing if we just check that okay from here if we can reach to this element or not and if this is true we can simply return true at that moment also and let's see that in action so let me clean this up a bit let's mark all the index values okay initially we create an element called final and this final element represents the last value in the uh, given input and initially we set it up to this uh, index number five right now our aim is that at any point we found out that amongst these values if anyone can reach this final element then that element by itself becomes this final so rather than storing all the uh, values of uh, at any given location we are actually shrinking down our boundary of search initially the final is at this fifth position now we are at this second position so all we need to do is to check that whether our current index i uh, our current index and this current value if some of these two is actually greater than whatever final we have so currently the final we have is this uh, 5 so this is the final we have current sum of these two values becomes uh, 4 plus 2 is equal to 6 which is greater than 5 which means that we can update the fine value of our final so now 
so now this becomes our new final and we basically don't care about this value anymore now we are at this third location and we try to see that uh, the index plus its value so this this becomes 3 plus 0 is it greater than our final no this is not greater than our final because this is 3 and this is 4 which means that we can't do anything over here so we drop this calculation and we check with the next element so over here we have this 2 and we have the value 1 so 2 plus 1 is this uh, greater than 4 uh, so greater than final no this is also not true which means we can't do anything over here we again go back now this is 1 and this is 3 now 1 plus 3 is this greater than or equal to uh, value 4 yes this is greater this is actually equal to 4 which means that we from this point we can come to this point this is what this concludes and which is what we want right so now we know this information which means that we can update the value of our final again so now the well the value of our final would become one so at this value and now at this zeroth position we need to check that whether we can reach to this one or not so current so over here the sum of these two value becomes zero plus uh, this is two so 2 is definitely greater than the final amount we have is 1 which means that we can reach over here so the final element would be shifted to this point and our at the end of our iteration the final would be 0 so now the final is 0 after the end of the iteration we only need to check that what is the value of final if final is 0 we return true if final is anything other than 0 we return false and this is a very good solution the whole thing runs in the time complexity of uh, big o of n and uh, if we see the space complexity we are only storing one additional parameter so we are a a essentially using constant space and we are solving this problem so this is a very efficient solution let's create a variable called final Oh, uh, I, I, Java, I can't use final. Let's call it final with an extra L. And uh, we'll assign its value as uh, nums.length minus one. And now we'll run a for loop and we'll start it from i is equal to uh, number of length, nums.length minus two. Because we already know the result for uh, the array length and we will run it up until we reach to this zeroth position we'll do i minus minus and inside the loop we are only going to check one condition that if uh, the current value of i plus nums of i if they are greater than or equal to whatever the final value we have we can uh, update the value of this final parameter whatever the ith value we have and uh, yeah that's that should be pretty much it now we only need to check that if uh, the value of this final character is uh, zero or not so if it is equal to zero we can return true else we can re will return false okay let's try to run the code seems like our solution is working let's try to submit the code okay our solution works a hundred percent faster than all the other solutions this is really good sign and uh, this is not constant time uh, but because we are basically shifting our uh, boundary we are essentially reducing the number of work we can do we can do and also if you see the memory usage we are actually better than uh, 86 percent of all the other solutions so this was a very small line of code but this uh, small line of code actually requires huge set of understanding so see you in the next video thank you